Thank you, Robin, very much indeed. A happy Christmas again, everybody. It's very good to, to be together uh, today. And I'm going to ask the children, especially, a question. Are you ready? What were you excited about this morning? What were you excited about? Presents, yeah. Okay, yeah. Santa, yeah. What were you excited about? Presents, that's right. You're excited about presents. Well, have a look at this. Here are some, here are some presents. Now, presents are wonderful. And we're going to be thinking about them today. Before we do, I'm going to say a prayer for us. Heavenly Father, we thank you again for this uh, Christmas day. And we pray that you'd help us to unwrap the wonderful presents which you're giving to us. And to see all your kindness in Jesus' name. Amen. So presents are wonderful. Um, when they're unwrapped, you can see what they are. But before they're unwrapped, you don't know what they are. Anyone know what's in here? No? No, I don't know what's in here yet. I have to find out. Now, so much of the joy of presents is actually in the unwrapping. In the unwrapping. Because the unwrapping shows us something very important. We find out what's inside, but also the wrapping tells us something else. It tells us that somebody has thought about this moment when we come to unwrap it, and they've been waiting for it, they've been looking forward to our joy when we unwrap a present. So children, think about this for a moment. When your mum and your dad were watching you this morning, or your gran or your granddad watching you this morning unwrap presents, what were they doing? They were watching you in joy unwrapping things, weren't they? They love watching you enjoy unwrapping things. So, here we go. We're going to do it live. This was in my stocking this morning. I haven't unwrapped it. I had a nice stocking, quite a big one actually. So, um, I'm going to see what's inside. Aha! What is it? Terry's, Terry's chocolate, chocolate orange. orange. How was lovely. I didn't know what was inside. But I know that someone took the time to think about it and to wrap that up for me. See, presents are good. They're a sign of our love for each other and they're a sign of God's love for us. So what about God? Well, the temptation for us is to forget, forget how important the wrapping is. You know, I've just, I've just chucked it aside. Well, the temptation for us is to forget how important the wrapping is. Now, little children, very little children, perhaps like Joella, really like wrapping paper. They like playing with it. And I think they've got something to teach us here. Because here's the thing, with God, both the wrapping and the present are important when God gives a gift to us. In fact, the wrapping is so important that actually you can't really separate the wrapping from the present. You see, all through history, God has been wrapping a wonderful present for us, a whopper, a showstopper. And he's been planning to bring joy to the whole world. He's looking forward to the day when the present is unwrapped. So I'm going to tell you a Christmas story about that present that God gives to his people. It's about one present, but it's got three names. Three names. The present's so good, it's got three names, and those names are Son of David, Son of Mary and Son of God. So here's the first name for the present. Son of David, a king. So we've been waiting for presents, we've been waiting for stockings. I particularly I like stockings a lot. But what were the people of God waiting for? They were waiting for a king. Why? Because the Son of David was going to be a king who would rescue the people. And that's what the Bible was getting at when we were reading in Luke about the journey that the Joseph and Mary and the baby Jesus were going on. It said in verse 4, Joseph went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem to the town of David because he belonged to the house and the line of David. So they went to Bethlehem. Now, it's a Christmas story and this Christmas story has some baddies in. Okay, you ready for this? The baddies. Good. To, thank you, Lawrence. That's great. We'll see you back in a moment. Okay. So, one of the baddies is the Roman king, and his name is Caesar. 
Now, he's making everyone register on his list by making them all go to, his ho- to their hometowns. Now, why does he want to do that? Because he thinks he's the true king of the world. He's the boss, and because his plan is to boss everyone ab- around. But the joke is on him. The joke is on him because his plan is to get everyone to think he's the boss, but actually, his plan means that the son of David, Jesus, inside Mary's tummy, goes to the city of David, Bethlehem, the very place that the true king of the world was going to be born. You see, Caesar thinks he's carrying out his own plan, but actually he's carrying out God's plan. Now, what then is God's plan? He's going to give us a present. So I've got a present here. I've got a present here. Yeah, here's a present. Now, I'm going to shake it. Not much noise. Knock it. I wonder what present it is. It's wrapped in some paper here, but it's also wrapped in something else. Can you see what's here? It's wrapped in the Bible. It's wrapped in the story of Israel. Now, I'm going to need someone to come and help me to find out what's inside. You guys have had a go already. Any of these guys want to come and help? Do you want to help? Who wants to come and help? Yeah? Okay. Do you want to come and help and pull out what's inside? Okay. There we go. What's inside? Oh, a crown. It was inflated a moment ago, but it's actually deflated. It's got a puncture. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. There's a crown inside. You see, all through, all through the Bible, wrapped in the story of God, through the Bible, has been a king. That's what's been prepared by God. That's a present. Jesus is is the son of David, a king in David's line. Just like the angel said uh, to Mary, the angel said to Mary, the Lord God will give him the throne of his father, Jacob, sorry, his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever, and his kingdom will never end. Now, that's very good news for us. It's very good news for us. Now, if you've been following on uh, through the uh, um, preaching that we've had in the church for the last few weeks, we've been thinking about Jacob's story. And in Jacob's story, we learned that God always had a plan, even in the hardest of times. And the invitation for us today is to hold on to that plan, hold on to that promise that God has a good purpose for us in the ups and the downs, and even in a world which is full of injustice. Now we're going to uh, sing a song, and then we're going to find out about two other names for Jesus, and look out for what's going on in this song about what the Son of God is clothed in. What's the Son of God clothed in? And then we'll find out about a couple more names for the present. Thanks very much, musicians. Wonderful. Please do have a a seat. So we've unwrapped name uh, number one for the present God is giving us, and that name is Jesus, son of David. We saw it as a crown wrapped in God's word. And we're going to come to the second name for the present God, God is giving us. And this is the second name. Here we go. Here's the second name. Son of Mary, a baby human. Now, have a look. I don't know if you can see well. Have a look at the painting up there. Can anyone see what's unusual about it? Adults or children? What's unusual about this painting? What do people think? Anyone want to shout out? What do you think, Peter? Peter? Okay, so there's a couple of angels, but maybe not the full company of angels. No, no, I actually know Okay, well, what's a bit unusual about this painting is it's extremely rare to find a painting of a pregnant Mary. You actually almost never see Mary pregnant. This is just in this t- in a tiny chapel in the Italian countryside. Normally you see Mary holding the baby. Okay. But she has actually a baby on board. Now, I need my two elves here. Okay. So can you hold these up, please? Nice and high. Stand here. There we go. Hold it up. She's got a baby on board. 
That's, that's Mary. Hold it up. Everyone can see. Uh, don't worry about that. Okay, so the baby is on board Mary. She's on her journey uh, to Bethlehem. Now, let's just go back to this picture. Now, who can see the wrapping here in this picture? The wrapping. Anyone see any wrapping? What's the wrapping? Jessica. Come on, Jesse. What were you saying? No. no. Mary. Mary is actually the wrapping. It might look as though the curtains there are a bit like wrapping paper, the angels unwrapping, but actually Mary is the wrapping. So it's not something, but rather someone who is the wrapping. And as we remember from the passage, Mary went to Bethlehem expecting a child. She had a baby on, on board. So Mary was an ordinary woman. She's an ordinary woman, but she was blessed by God. Now, our presents are wrapped in fairly flimsy paper. So if you see what I can do with this paper, you can actually tear this paper. It's wrapped in flimsy paper. And God's present was actually wrapped in a vulnerable human body. A vulnerable human body. Jesus was clothed in flesh. Mary was flesh and blood. So wrapping paper can be torn and bodies can be torn too. Our bodies can be torn when we get hurt, when we get sick, and when one day we die. Mary's body can be torn. And here's the important thing for us, is that the baby who was born from Mary can be torn too. And that's why this present, Jesus being the son of Mary, is so important for us. Jesus was born just like us, a child of an ordinary woman, wrapped in Mary's flesh. And by doing that, by God doing that, he says a massive yes to us, to us being human. God now knows what it is to be a human. And because he's human, God can be torn. Because he can be torn, he can be torn for us. And because he can be torn for us, we can be mended. Jesus took on human flesh in order to bring healing to all human flesh. And that's why the wrapping Mary is so important for us, for our salvation. So that's the second name that we've had. We've had Jesus, son of Mary. And now we're going to come to the third name. Because the question is, how is this son of Mary, who's a king, how is he going to be a saviour for us? How is he going to bring healing for us? And that's where we come to the last name. Jesus is son of God, a saviour. I'll come to the picture in a moment. But just think in the story. It said, while they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. And she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. Mary knows this is going to be an important baby. The angel has come to her and said that the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. She takes care, doesn't she, of the baby. She wraps him in cloths and, and, and lays him in a manger. But how will this baby bring salvation? And that's where we come to the third name. The third name of the baby is Son of God, a Saviour. You see, Luke is always thinking about the end of the story at the beginning. He talks about the forgiveness of sins that this baby will bring. He's pointing us from Christmas to Good Friday and to Easter. So Jesus the boy grew up to be a man, fully human. He went to be torn for our sins on the cross and then he died our death so that humans could be forgiven. Do you remember that Mary wrapped him in cloths when he was born? Now I'm going to need my, my helpers again. You put those down on the floor. Okay. Now I'm going to need you to hold out this. Now, these are not the cloths which a baby would be um, swaddled in. Just hold that out. These are grave clothes. They're a picture of grave clothes. Can you see the grave clothes there in the picture? Yeah, can you see those? The grave clothes are there. You see, they wrapped him in grave clothes when he was born, uh, when he died. But those grave clothes weren't the right wrapping for, for the Son of David, the Son of Mary, the Son of God. Because as we see in the picture, Jesus didn't stay dead. He rose from the dead. He left the tomb alive. And what was he wrapped in? He wasn't wrapped in grave clothes. Let's, let's lay those down. OK. 
okay? He wasn't wrapped in grave, grave clothes. He was wrapped in resurrection life, clothed in immortality, fully man. When he was born, he came out of Mary's tummy. But when he came back from the dead, he came out of the empty tomb. Thank you, elves. You can sit down now. There we go. Let's give them a round of applause, please. And that is the third name for the present. We've had the son of David, and we've had, get these ones out, we've had the son of Mary, and now we've got the grave clothes folded and laid aside, uh, the son uh, of God. So think about presents, think about every present you're going to unwrap today. And when you think about a present you're going to unwrap, think about Jesus. Think about God wrapping his gift in the gift of the king in Israel's story. And think about God wrapping his gift in Mary's tummy. And think about God wrapping Jesus in resurrection life when he rose from that saving death on the glorious cross. We want, we've sung some wonderful words from our carols today. God looks on us with a heart of love. Oh, come, let us adore him. And we're going to sing our last carol in a, in a bit, and that's Joy to the World. And that takes us to the way that God is still wrapping presents. You see, God is still wrapping presents today. And he's wrapping his present Jesus to bring joy to the world. Do you remember in the passage it said there was no guest room for them? No guest room for them? Well, if we trust God this Christmas day, we actually become the wrapping for Jesus. He's wrapped in our hearts, every heart preparing him room. Jesus within us by the Holy Spirit. He's the present that we can give and receive every day. So if we've already welcomed Jesus into our hearts to be our guest, if, we are, if he's made our hearts his home, then today is a day of great joy for us, a day of great joy, because we have all that we need. The Lord has become flesh like us through the incarnation. If you're still exploring whether it is that you want to have that joy in your life, and this is a day of great hope for you, it's a day of great hope, because if you're wanting to receive the gift of God, then he is available to you. If, we are, uh, if, you, if you haven't yet explored that hope, we are offering a chance to consider it over three evenings in the new year to think about the hope that Christmas brings. Now, one last bit to the Christmas story. One last bit. Last Christmas, we were in isolation, the four of us, for 10 days even 12 days perhaps, 14 days, it was a very long time. We had rolling COVID, rolling COVID. And we had a Christmas tree, a bit like this, but amazingly, it was a refillable Christmas tree. We'd come down every morning, do you remember Luke and Peter? We'd come down every morning and there'd be new presents there to keep our spirits going, a refillable Christmas tree. But one day, those presents ran out didn't they? One day they ran out. When we put our faith in God, he gives us a gift and we become the wrapping for a present which will never ever run out. Keeps on being filled. So what's left? The presents are unwrapped. We've got the recycling paper and we've, uh, sorry, the wrapping paper and we put it in recycling. When the festive food is eaten, what's going to be left for us? And the invitation for Christmas is to wrap our lives forever around the great present, Jesus, who's son of David, son of Mary, son of God, our saviour. And then to live our lives full of joy, sharing that present with others. Let's pray, and then we'll sing this wonderful last uh, song, Joy to the World. We thank you, our Father, for your great gift to us, your great present to us. We thank you that the, the wrapping matters to you, the story of Israel, Mary, and wonderfully the resurrection life of Jesus. And we thank you, uh, Lord, for your great blessing of Christmas Day. And we pray that you would make our home, you make your home in us, and that we would live lives full of Christ as we go out into this day. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. So let's sing this wonderful last song, uh, Joy to the World, and then we'll close with a prayer after that.